All right, so we've been dealing with vectors, which is just one dimensional set of sequence of values, right? So, but a lot of times in our transcriptome data, our data is two dimensional, right? Or a matrix, or even a data frame. Um, so, um, <clears throat> the next level of uh, object is basically an array or a matrix, which is two dimensional instead of one dimensional. Uh, array can be multi subscripted, right? So, this can have as many dimensions as you want. So think of matrix as a special version of an array where you only have two dimensions. Um, so we can create a matrix using the matrix command, uh, which is very similar to the array function. Uh, the first argument of the matrix command is basically the values that you want to uh, store in the matrix. Uh, and then it also requires you to tell it how many rows your matrix has and also the number of columns your matrix has, okay? Um, whereas if you use the array function, it, you would just tell it the dimensions. And in the dimension property, you would basically tell it what, how, what's the size of the first dimension, second dimension, and third dimension, and however dimensions you have, okay? But for most part, we use a matrix, and we use um, one way of generating the data is using this matrix function, another one, um, is using the C bind and R bind. Okay, so a C bind is basically binding vectors or matrices column by column. Okay, so you imagine you have a, a vector here. It would basically combine these two things into a matrix. Okay, R bind works the other way. It takes a vector row by row and creates a matrix out of them. Okay, so the thing you have to keep in mind is that the vectors have to be the same length, all right? So the matrix, uh, again, has to be of the same uh, size. So you have to have the same number of values that come together. So it has to be a perfect rectangle, square, however you want to think about it, right? Um, so it always has to have the same number of uh, rows so it makes a perfect square. Now, um, for cases where you have a vector that you're joining that is shorter, it sometimes gives you an error, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't give you an error, it's trying to do something, it's trying to guess what you're trying to do. So for example, if you only had a uh, vector that was this short, what it would do is for the remaining values, it would actually repeat all the values underneath. So you may not have intended that, so you should be very careful and just make sure yourself that the vectors are of the same length. Okay, so now when we have these vectors and uh, matrices, there are different ways of indexing them, right? So the first one is to basically just use the specific values here, right? So let's say x is a vector, and here we're gonna refer to the elements inside of this vector by using the square bracket. And inside of the square bracket, we can define what series of values we want back. So this is a shortcut of saying, I want the first 10 values back, okay? Uh, this, is, uh, this works similarly in the matrix. Uh, here, instead, we can actually specify which rows we want. And in a matrix, we actually can leave out the positions of the dimension if you want all of it. So what this means is give me back the first, third, and the fourth row and all the different columns. You can also do this by providing a logical vector. So in this case, this says I have three rows. Give me the first and second one, but not the third one. But again, leaving out the last value here for columns, this means give me all the columns, okay? And here, again, for a vector, I can give it a condition to tell me for whatever values are less than five, this would give me a series of trues and false. For every value that it's true, it will actually give me back that value. And finally, another way of getting information out is by using names, okay? So we can actually create names or labels on our data. So if we have a vector, or a matrix, we can give it names for a specific values, a position in the vector, or we can give it uh, the row names and column names for our matrix and data frames. 
So in this case, uh, we have a vector called fruit with all these values. I've given it names by using this function here. And uh, names are orange, banana, apple, and peach. So in this case, uh, the order does matter. So the orange will be associated with the first value. The banana will be associated with the second value, and so on. And now, if you wanted to store uh, apple and orange, which this would basically give you the value for lunch, it would give you the va uh, values uh, 5 and 1. Okay, so we'll see that in the live demo, how this information can be stored. And the order of the permission uh, data that you're asking for is also conserved. What that means is you're going to first get the value 1, and then you'll get the value 5. Okay, so the order gets uh, specified as well. 